there's some people I'm going to bring up, but I want that staff stamp of approval from the coordinator that this is a group that they can thrive working with. And um, so we'll be doing that quickly because our guys want to know, you know, and every every hour that goes by is is somewhat agonizing to them. And so we'll work on that, um, getting a staff in place. I'm not saying we'll have every position in place, but uh, we'll have a pretty good start on it. And I will continue to meet with the players and build the relationships. There's a lot of recruiting that goes on, um, but first and foremost, the recruiting needs to happen within this team and getting them to, to buy in. And, um, you know, in the world today and how easy it is to jump from one place to another, you know, this is, I mean, I'll just be frank with you, this is a time when people try to take advantage of that. And um, I mean, that's the competitive world we live in. And um, I understand that. And so recruiting our own roster is first and foremost. And then um, the recruitment of, you know, those that, uh, you know, have the interest, maybe are committed, um, maybe haven't signed, um, kind of just touching base with all of them and making sure, you know, I understand, understand, have a good, good understanding of what, uh, what that is all out there. Um, I understand spring balls down the road and organization, I think, is one of my greatest strengths. And we'll have a day to day organization that's 12 months out uh, in every area to support our guys. Coach, Emily Grace McCorder from the next round. We are so excited that you're here in Alabama. As you stand inside Bryant Denny, what would you say to your 18 to 20 year old self playing wide receiver at Sioux Falls? <laughs> yeah, this, he, he would have never uh, thought anything like this was ever possible. And, um, you know, I think that's what I love about my journey is that um, it was never about getting to a place like Alabama. Um, it's always been about enjoying the moment and just loving football, loving the pureness of the game, um, loving being a teammate. Uh, and so if I went back to those days, um, it would have never been in my mind. I mean, coaching, I think, is something I knew I wanted to do. Uh, and I loved high school coaching. I did it for two years. I thought I saw myself doing that forever. I got sucked into the college football world, and uh, here we are. But, um, you know, it's, it's, um, it's just special. Uh, it means a lot uh, that people entrust me uh, with uh, the players, their lives. Um, like Greg said it, you know, I hope that parents are seeing myself and this staff as people who they want their sons to play for, because um, that's the way I look at them. If you saw my daughter's 18 and going to be going to college next year, and I think when you have uh, kids of your own, um, you have a perspective uh, that is kind of focused on all of that. And uh, I can't wait to provide an environment where these guys are having one of the greatest times of their lives. Hello, Coach. Pat Duggins, Alabama Public Radio and NPR. Welcome to Tuscaloosa. Um, everybody in the room here knows that it took Coach Saban a couple of seasons to come up to speed before he started, you know, winning championships and such. I've spoken to students, and these are young people, mind you, who say they're going to give you three games. Yeah. <laughs> Can you talk about that pressure and dealing with it? I got three. Okay, I was making sure I had that many. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, here's the thing. Um, I'm going to ask our guys to bring their best energy, attitude, and effort. I'm going to ask my staff to bring their best energy, attitude, and effort. I'm going to bring myself, and I hope that's what they ask of me, and that's all they're asking me. We bring the best energy, attitude, and effort. we got to work. we got to be smart. we got to have very skilled people, whether it's players, whether it's staff. Uh, we got to have people that are relentless. We got to people that are driven. Um, driven is deeper than you know being motivated. Something that's that's deep within. Um, but you know, I understand that there's a a, a piece um, to, and I'm all about winning. I'm never going to shy away from it. Um, one of our um, one of our main slogans uh, we call it a maxim is winners win because that's what winners do. And we're not going to shy away from winning and the importance of that. But we're going to focus on the process. We're going to focus, focus on those things. And when we have the foundation that we have and we have the right people, um, we understand there's going to be tough times. There was tough times this last year, and they got through it. Um, they got through it because they focused on not winning but focused on the process. I believe that. I know how Coach Saban is, and uh, I've already heard from the players on you know how they regrouped, uh, asked them some questions specifically about that. And so uh, all my experiences, I think, lend to – being able to handle, um, you know, I was in a program and, and, you know, when you're at small college, it's not seen by as many people and there's not as many voices, but I will tell you this, that your want to, your desire to win and the amount of effort you put into trying to win a championship 
it's not any different. Because if you're focused on having this experience for the kids and them hosting a trophy, um, you pour everything into it and it just hurts just as bad if you fall short. And so, um, you know, we'll pour everything into these guys and we'll focus on the process. We'll have a foundation of understanding how we're going to respond to adversity when it comes because we understand that that's part of it as well. Two more, Ryan Brown. Coach Ryan Brown from the next round. You mentioned upstairs that this is one of, if not the only job you would have left Washington for. To the best of your memory, can you recount the moment you were first told Alabama was interested in you following Nick Saban and your reaction to that? Um, yeah, I think it was, um, you know, the announcement and, and later that evening and understand I hadn't, didn't even get, get a chance to talk, talk to Greg at that time yet, but just that there might be some interest and it's not even the rumors and things that you hear and see. Um, you hear about them quickly, right, because everyone's paying attention to it and it gets to you uh, in a lot of different ways. But, um, you know, obviously the opportunity and, and planning uh, to, to get the chance to meet on Thursday, uh, I think, was, um, was something that, you know, I was really excited about. And, um, you know, I think what I really – always hope for in these situations is, yes, I mean, this is a spot I, would, I wanted to be. But I think most importantly, it's about making sure that my values uh, are the same values that Alabama has. And the process and the things that I want are the same things that um, Alabama wants. And um, making sure that Greg and I jived in a way uh, where, you know, we feel great about locking arms and, and taking on the fights together. And uh, I saw that when I met with him, I feel, uh, extremely confident um, in how passionate is he about about uh, UW, or UW, about Alabama, and uh, um, and uh, everything that uh, you know happens here. And so I can't wait to go through this journey. I talk about journey a lot. It means a lot to me because I think that's what we're all on. Thank Chad, you. I'm sorry, coach. Last one right here, guys. I know there's more, but uh, he's on a tight schedule. Coach, congrats uh, right here. Nick Brooks with WTVY down in Dothan. Um, obviously, a lot of fans showing out at the airport yesterday. Um, a lot of excitement. Uh, what do you have to say for some other fans who um, are still getting to know you and, and trying to get excited for you as the next head coach after 17 years with Coach Saban? Yeah, I think be all in, right? I'm going to tell my guys that, um, you know, not just uh, – I had a coach uh, that I really uh, learned a lot from. And when we were – trying to build a program one time, he challenged his guys to, you know, not like dip your toe in the water to see how cold it is, right? We need it at a pool or whatever it might be. He's like, just jump all in. And that's what I need our, that's what I need our players to do. But that's also what we need our fans to do. Um, we, we need you all, all in. Um, I can promise you that uh, we'll have extremely competent people, uh, coaching staff, off the field staff, all working together, very cohesive unit. Um, bring it all together, and uh, that all together piece is, you know, everyone here, uh, the fan base, working together and being all in and not just trying to test the waters and kind of trying to figure out if, uh, you know, they want to be a part of this or not.